myself. So howdy. I'm Wade Strong with STV. And yes, I'm a fighting Texas Aggie class of 1981. And I love being here at UT. Uh, I love the rivalry that we have with uh, University of Texas. And I just love that we beat them in baseball this week badly. And I can't wait till we get to play them in football in November. And it's just going to be great. So I'm a fourth generation Texan from East Texas, and I have a passion for safety. And I am a transportation engineer, and I have had the privilege of managing over $5 billion worth of projects in the state of Texas uh, over the last 40 something years. So yes, I'm an old Aggie. And I saw family and friends die from car wrecks when I was young and experienced that, and I wanted to do something about it. And I've had the privilege of working on wonderful projects with TxDOT, the tow road authorities in Texas, uh, and it's just been a wonderful experience to improve our transportation, improve uh, the great state of Texas in, uh, in many, many ways. Uh, some of you may know me. I've been in Austin the past 25 years, working on a few projects here, 45 North Toll Road, 45 Southwest Toll Road, uh, CapEx South, I-35, that's under construction now. Uh, so I've seen a lot of great improvements. And now I'm at DFW Airport. I moved last year uh, in the, uh, for the civil uh, landside team. I'm the program director at DFW Airport. And why did I do that? A roadway transportation engineer going to work for an airport. Well, I'm passionate about transportation. I love making roads work better, anything that has to do with transportation so people can get from one place to another better and just make life better. And DFW Airport is a 50-year-old airport, and it needs a lot of help. Uh, it's many of you driven through DFW Airport and tried to find the terminal, how to get there, well, the main artery, International Parkway, ramps on the right to, to enter, the exit's on the left. And if you've ever driven through there, it is the wonkiest thing you've ever seen, because that's not how it's done in Texas. And we're going to change that. And so that was one project that I was very passionate about being a part of, but there are many others. The Landside program has 42 projects right now uh, in planning, design, or construction. DFW has an airside program with about 20 three projects, a facilities with over 90 projects. Uh, there's a terminal expansion team and as well as a new terminal team for Terminal F. So there'll be six new six terminals total at DFW Airport in the next couple of years. So the challenges are just huge with, with airports. Um, economic, there are the economic engines of their region. DFW, I look at it as the twin turbocharger for the economic engine in DFW. What it has done for that entire region and the state is just tremendous. And the challenge is taking that old infrastructure, maintaining, rehabilitating, but also growing to meet the demand of this great growing state that we have. So we have a wonderful panel here. Uh, I'd like for them to introduce themselves. Uh, and we start with, uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember your name. I haven't met you yet. Yeah, Emily. <laughs> Emily, please. I'm uh, Emily Lambert. I work for TxDOT Aviation. Uh, I work on the team with planning and programming for uh, primarily the Houston region right now, but I'm also over the Bryan and Waco district. And so our team is responsible for facilitating with the FAA and the local um, governments throughout the state to work on airport development projects and try to build the infrastructure out and help the local governments where we see fit. and. My background is in aviation for the last few years, and I've been with TxDOT now for almost two years, and um, it's been really interesting over the last couple of years seeing how we can be very strategic with our funding sources, given that the um, there's slightly different struggles that GA airports deal with in commercial, but it's all part of the same system, so it's really interesting and cool to collaborate with you know, today I'm excited for this conversation to be able to hear more of the commercial side of things too. Thank you, Emily. Joe? Good afternoon. My name is Giovanni Osorio. Um, I work for the uh, city of Houston in the, uh, with the Houston Airport System as an assistant director in design for infrastructure. 
Uh, my background is in architecture. I grew up in New York City, went to school over there, Pratt Institute, School of Architecture. I uh, moved to Texas uh, quite a long time ago. So um, work for, I have been working for the city for 18 years. Uh, I worked for seven years with uh, wastewater operations, Houston Public Works, um, seven years with uh, general services, and I've been with the airport system for uh, four years now. And as far as uh, uh, professionally, uh, um, uh, my career spans close to 40 years, uh, uh, delving in design, production, uh, construction, uh, remediation, and we're talking about uh, uh, facilities like uh, police stations, fire stations, health centers, uh, designing hospitals, doing all kinds of things. Um, and, and also obviously doing underground utility work, uh, which I'm very familiar with, um, and I have a lot of respect for the people that, that do that. Um, so a conversation I was having with somebody yesterday was that uh, without that um, utility infrastructure, especially water, wastewater, you know, life support systems, we wouldn't have the mega cities that we do have. Uh, I'm proud to live in the uh, um, Houston, uh, uh, greater metropolitan area, uh, and be working there. Um, and as far as the airports, uh, are, are very complex mini cities. Mm. So all of this knowledge, all of this experience uh, comes into play every, every single day. There is no boring day. Um, there's always challenges, and, uh, but, but I love it. Uh, we come here to uh, bring solutions all the time. And we, um, we look forward to partnering and, and continuing partnering with all, all of the different disciplines, the subject matter experts, uh, you know, the, the, the overall design uh, and construction community, and uh, because it does uh, take a village, right? Um, anyway, glad to be here. Thank you, Joe. Sunday? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sunday Odiaye. I'm glad to be here with you guys. Um, I have a background in statistics. I have uh, two degrees. Uh, so I've had about five years of my life um, doing commercial um, business. Uh, at the same time, I did um, study civil engineering and um, I've been working with the airport right now for about five years now with Dallas Law Field. I work for the city of Dallas. I'm one of the uh, uh, senior engineer in the team. I work with the capital development team to ensure that uh, we meet the need of the airport when it comes to um, development of the airport, either a side or land side. Uh, my primary focus at the airport is basically being land side, how to meet all the challenges that uh, comes to the airport, especially on the land side part of it. Um, Dallas Lowfield is a very unique airport. Um, if those of you that are familiar with Dallas Lowfield, it's located within a city and um, its its boundaries are, are literally straight in front of people's houses. So it poses its own challenges and um, these are the things um, there at the airport to help resolve. Goes beyond Our customers at the airport goes beyond um, those that are flying. Uh, our customers are also those that live around us and so that gives us a huge challenge in meeting the needs of those that live around the airport at the same time, those that want to fly and do business with the airport. So I'm looking forward to um, having questions today and uh, how we can partner together and keep uh, improving what we have in the city of Dallas and also um, uh, the state of Texas as a whole. Thank you all. Thank you, Sunday. So Emily, I'll start with you. So how do you see the current state of Texas's airport infrastructure and what are the primary factors that are driving its growth and development that you've seen at, from a tech stop perspective uh, for, for various regions in Texas? For uh, the growth perspective, I would say that uh, the biggest thing that highway side and airport side has been just the need for pavement projects, uh, developing the runways. It seems like no matter how much funding we receive, we can never have enough money for funding. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest driving factor is just looking at the population growth over the last few years and the pandemic not really slowing that down, especially with GA airports. So it's just been the, the small towns are getting bigger and it seems like uh, I don't see an end in sight for that. Okay, thank you. Uh, Gio, do you have anything to add about uh, from Houston's perspective on the airports there? Sure, I think she hit it right on the, the, the nail right on the head. Everybody's moving to Texas, which is really good <laughs> for us, right? It's, uh, it's really bumping up the, uh, the business opportunities for everybody. Um, 
We got over $36 billion uh, uh, of uh, business coming through through our uh, Houston uh, infrastructure, you know, the airport system uh, from all uh, entities all, all over. It's, it's really a global market nowadays. Um, and customer experience is at the top of that, right? Uh, the, the human experience of, of uh, people traveling, uh, going through our facilities, uh, and, and us trying to, to uh, um, provide that positive experience so that all businesses uh, is done through and to and uh, in our cities, in this case, uh, Houston, right? So that people have a memorable experience that they want to come back and keep uh, doing business uh, uh, with us. So. Thank you, Gio. Mm -hmm. uh, Sandy, anything to add for, uh, from the city of Dallas's perspective on uh, the infrastructure there? I know Love Field is limited in space yeah. and kind of how you deal with that and with the growth that's going on. Um, for the growth, uh, Dallas Love Field currently is um, limited by the right amendments on mm -hmm. how much we can grow. We are limited by um, about 20 gates. We're trying to make uh, best use of what we currently have um, to accommodate the growth. I would tell you, um, before the pandemic, uh, the numbers that we have forecasted that we're going to be doing by 2030, we've already surpassed that immediately after the pandemic. So we are at cap, and, but we are taking advantage of technology. We're taking advantage of different aspects of, uh, of the industry to manage what we have. Uh, to just add to what my colleagues have mentioned, uh, the growth in the state of Texas is huge. And it's not just that people are moving to the state of Texas because uh, they feel the weather is nice. The major reason is because of the opportunities we have in Texas. And the opportunity is not limited to every other industry. There's also so many opportunities in aviation, and that's why you see a lot of people move down to Texas, including Dallas. Uh, so we have to create room in every industry to accommodate this growth. Thank you very much. So for um, evolution of airport infrastructure, what technological advancements and strategic planning do you see that you're using to help, uh, help your airports you know, keep up to speed with the growth? What do you, are there things that you see in technology? Over the last couple of months and uh, for future planning, I see that we're starting to implement more uh, infrastructure for electric vehicle, electric aircraft, electric vehicle parking outside of terminal buildings and the use of drones now too for various inspections around the state um, at airports and off airport for bridge inspections and such. So those are the two biggest trends that I'm seeing and that we've been implementing at TxDOT. Very good, yeah, glad to hear that. Uh, Gio, anything to add to that? So, um, I, actually that's, that's, that's a very good point. Uh, good point. We are doing the same thing in, uh, in Houston. Um, electric vehicles, we are implementing that as part of uh, everything we do in our projects. Currently, actually, uh, I'll take this opportunity, actually we are um, renewing our on-call contracts, which is a, a five-year contract that the uh, city of Houston has, and basically bringing on uh, you know, design consultants, architectural and engineering firms to be on call uh, to tackle all of our projects that, that we have. So basically just uh, be ready to go. And we are asking for full service firms to provide all these services. So uh, we looked at the, the current contract and we added, uh, for example, uh, a BIM chapter in that. So we are requiring uh, BIM coordination with most of our projects uh, to make sure that um, you know, uh, we can cross coordinate across disciplines and also that eliminates, uh, that expedites the process but eliminates also uh, errors uh, and issues during construction, time delays, uh, cost factors, right? Um, and uh, so you know, I tell people there's a lot of uh, complexity and simplicity, right? And obviously when we're talking about AI, there's also a lot of uh, HI in AI. Right, and I don't think that's gonna go away. You still need the human factor in that to still, uh, number one, learn how to use the tools that, that we are provided because they are tools to uh, uh, help us um, um, expedite the processes um, and be able to cross coordinate uh, uh, so we can have better turnout on our projects. But also as a, as a uh, uh, checks and balances system, right? You still need to follow through on everything that we do. So just sending emails, and just waiting for a reply is not good enough. You still need to pick up the phone, talk to people, uh, make sure that the recipients not only have received the information, but also 
uh, have received the message that you were planning to, uh, you know, send across. So all of these uh, things, uh, you know, we are restructuring, for example, in infrastructure, we are uh, cross-coordinating with all of our business sectors uh, to, to better the communication lines and create more efficient systems. Uh, for example, we do have, uh, you know, I, I, I manage the design uh, section. Uh, we do have uh, project delivery, uh, you know, that also includes uh, not only construction, but also uh, CIP uh, management, uh, you know, grants uh, management, uh, uh, you know, for uh, federal and local funded uh, projects, but we also have a section that does our project control. So we have a central library where we gather all the information and create all these uh, different um, you know, we were talking about spreadsheets in some of the, uh, in the, of the previous presentations, um, but also uh, be able to um, extract that information and create reports that then we can uh, submit to our uh, director and senior management, right, uh, for them to make educated decisions on and everything that we do. So we're trying to look at the, uh, the whole program holistically, um, you know, and encompass all the different facets of what we need to do to deliver the projects to, to the client, right? So. Uh, we not only take the, the, the final customers, you know, the people that go through our facilities as the, the ultimate customers, but also every single business unit, uh, we look at them as our customers as well. And we're in constant communication, and I think that's key to everything that we do. Thank you, Gio. Sandy, anything to add to that uh, yeah. from the Dallas perspective? Yeah, from the um, city of Dallas, as uh, at Dallas Lawfield, some of the things we're looking at uh, would be the customer engagement um, programs that we have. Uh, for example, if you pull into it, most modern garages now, if you pull into that, uh, it can tell you how full the lower floor is, how um, move straight to the second floor, move to the third floor, how many car space you have. So we're bringing that into our terminal system where you can uh, literally have the app on your phone and walk into the airport and it reduce the amount of engagement you have because that also impacts the, uh, your walk time and from where you get into the airport to when you get to your gate, because you see a situation where no matter how much uh, wayfinding you have in the airport, um, people will still stop and ask questions. How do I get here? How do I get to the uh, so, so, so place? But when you have, when you when we implement those kind of apps, uh, people are able to engage with it, and you know it just takes you to the direction where you want to go right on the app. And also, we're implementing that in, uh, we're working on it right now. It's not been um, fully uh, developed, but we're working on also implementing that entire restroom system because one of the challenges we have at the airport is also restrooms, especially with the ladies' restroom. You want to see, you don't want to walk five minutes to one restroom and tell you, oh, it's, you have to stay on the queue for additional 10 minutes. So you want to see, if I walk right, how many space do I have if I walk like So you, you can interact with it. So, so we're creating apps to help increase customer engagement in that likes. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. And that, and that, that is all about customer experience, and that is uh, a worldwide airport initiative to make, you know, encourage folks to, tra you know, use transportation by airplane. I mean, it, it, because it reduces people on cars, on highways. And so Customer experience is very, very important. Uh, anything else you want to add about customer experience, new things you're doing, in addition to what you talked about Sunday? Uh, what are you seeing, uh, Emily? So I think um, the others you have touched on this a little bit, but and from the other sessions, I would say that it's bringing in um, the other stakeholders and working on collaborating and transparency throughout like the data. Mm -hmm. So I think that's helping us provide better customer service to the airports and to the airport users as a result of that because we're able to provide more clear data in a way that everybody can understand. So okay. I think that's really what we're trying to work on on Aviation's team is just really fostering that customer service, being available for those conversations face-to-face. -face. Mm -hmm. I know it was mentioned before. Um, picking up the phone, calling people, just bringing like the people back into it too. So it's ah. not only data, but it's also the faces. Very good. Um, so it makes it kind of just like more than just a project. It's a, it's, we're working on building this for the community. Wonderful. That's great. 
Gio, anything to add to that? Sure. Um, as my colleagues were talking uh, about the uh, different AI, uh, you know, uh, the programs implementations and in, the, you know, to do the metrics, um, we do the same thing in the Houston airport systems, for example, the restrooms, which is one of the biggest commodities we have, right? Everybody has to use them before they get on board, after they get on board, after they go through a restaurant and all that. So uh, we are developing, uh, developing a, a modularity in the restrooms, right? Uh, so that we can expedite uh, the, uh, the need to do repairs, but also renovate our restrooms. And, and right now we're working to see uh, um, uh, developing a lab so that we can develop these modules um, to do that, not only to, to uh, uh, design and fine tune everything that we're doing as far as functionality, but also to train our staff uh, you know, um, after the uh, project gets turned over to our uh, maintenance staff, you know, to do O and M, um, you know, we do have metrics uh, for measuring uh, client satisfaction, customer satisfaction through our facilities. Um, also, those we do have metrics to to uh, to that alert us to uh, when systems go wrong, whether something starts functionally, whether in the in the restroom or lighting or AC and all that. Um, we do have phones throughout, and they're always uh, sounding off. Uh, and we basically have our crews and everybody that works in the airport in, in, in their particular areas to take care of that. Um, but as far as customer satisfaction, it always comes down to the human touch. We also have people on the terminals that are greeting customers, that are you know giving directions, that are always having that you know showing them that smile. That that you know. Uh, those those are amenities that um, that go a long way with uh, you know client satisfaction and people having a a, a positive memory uh, or experience uh, you know through our facilities. Um, so basically, we implement all these different tools, right? Both uh, you know technologically, but also um, uh, the, uh, the the human interaction to to better our customer experience throughout the uh, the three airports that we manage, right? Um, Bush, uh, Hobby. Ellington uh, um, Airport, and also the Houston Spaceport, which is, uh, you know, sprucing up with uh, full development over there. And we are very happy and proud of that. And uh, we're proud to say also that we have the, uh, the only five-star uh, um, <laughs> airport, Skytrax Airport in North America, which is Javi Airport. And, and we're working towards making Bush the same way. So Wonderful. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. So uh, finally, what advice do you offer businesses and investors looking in to capitalize on the growth opportunities that we have in Texas, uh, airports particularly. Um, anything, any thoughts there? Because we need the money, <laughs> badly. So yes. any thoughts on that, Emily? Yeah, I would say kind of just like piggybacking off of what I previously said with the human interaction um, going out there. Texas is mm. huge, and from my couple of years with TxDOT so far, I've probably driven to almost every corner of the state, mm -hmm. and it really means a lot to the local uh, municipalities, the airport managers, if you go out and have the conversations with them, see what their local economy needs, see what their local needs are in general. And um, so I think that would be the biggest thing I would suggest to investors seeing, you know, you have to kind of see it with your, your own eyes and get out there and see what businesses, what business potential and what businesses currently exist there. So that's what I would recommend. Thank you very much. Gio, anything to tell about? Uh, sure. I, um, as I was saying, uh, um, you know, uh, we have three airports and we have the Houston Spaceport. So last year we completed, uh, you know, the development of uh, the Houston Spaceport Master Plan. Uh, we have three big tenants right now, um, Axiom, uh, Collins Aerospace, and Intuitive Machines, which you probably saw the news a couple of weeks ago with that lunar, uh, lunar ma uh, module. Uh, one of them is developing the, uh, um, you know, the uh, spacesuit that will be used, uh, and that should be completed in 2025, 100% made in Texas, right, in Houston. Um, and we are uh, bringing more tenants. Uh, but I, I, I want to stress out that uh, the, that the um, the development of everything that we're doing at the Houston Airport System. The city of Houston also encompasses all the different uh, entities that we have uh, surrounding, you know, Metro, uh, TxDOT, uh, the different counties, and, and it, it really takes a village to put this together and to bring the funding, uh, you know, uh, and, and bring all the subject matter expertise from all walks of life, right? Because uh, we need funding to do that. Uh, we have aging infrastructure that we are, we're all uh, dealing with. Uh, and at the same time, we had to uh, uh, be at the cutting edge of everything that is happening because, again, we are competing in a, in a global market. So uh, there's plenty of opportunities in, in Houston, right? So 
I'm going to be a little bit biased. Come to Houston. There's, you know, there's, there's plenty to do in Houston. We can take you to outer space, too. So uh, thank yeah, you. That's great. Thank you. <laughs> Sunday, from the Dallas perspective. Um, thank you so much. Um, one of my favorite quotes is, um, uh, one of you, which is 1,000, two, which is 10,000. And this is because uh, there's nothing as great as having a partnership. You know, uh, Dallas Law Field is what it is today because of partnership. Uh, several years ago, about 20 years ago, Dallas Law Field could not boast of the things we do today. Uh, um, but that was made possible with partnership with Southwest. And whether you like it or not, it has become a win-win situation for the city of Dallas and also for Southwest. Southwest partnered with Law Field and pouring money into Law Field. Mm -hmm. And today, Southwest is one of the biggest airlines in North America. They, they were never like that before. But the partnership brought about expansion of their business, but it also brought about expansion of Dallas Lafayette Airport. So my encouragement is for uh, everyone that is in, uh, in, interested in investing in an airport, go ahead and do it. It brings about expansion of your own business as well as it brings about uh, development of the city at large. So uh, it's a win-win situation for you, for your organization, for the airport, for the city, and for the uh, country at large. Thank, Thank you. you very much. So that wraps it up. I appreciate the panel's time very much, and we'll be available uh, for questions if you have some later on. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.